Looking to play your favorite sport or get in a workout in Hong Kong to stay in shape physically and mentally during trying times? Good luck with that. You name it, the government has it locked down to fight the coronavirus. Gyms, yoga studios, swimming pools, basketball courts, lacrosse boxes, football pitches, hockey rinks, cycling tracks, rugby fields, pool halls, table tennis venues, the list goes on and on. The ban even applies to tennis and golf, two sports that clearly adhere to social distancing regulations even before the pandemic. Outdoor workout equipment and children's playgrounds in parks across the city are taped off. But head to any shopping center and you can join the crush of people doing the only thing that anyone can do anymore in Hong Kong, spend money they don't have. Figure that one out. Hong Kongers have now endured more than 140 days without their favorite recreational pastimes since COVID-19 started spreading in early 2020. The city's fourth wave, which has dragged out through the Christmas holidays and now looks to extend well past Lunar New Year in 2021, brings with it a new level of apathy, fatigue and frustration. About 50 tennis players headed to Tamar Park two weeks ago staging a peaceful protest. Within minutes, more than 100 police officers turned up with a loudspeaker to bark orders for the crowd to disperse. Some were out of work coaches who have been given nothing more than 7,500 Hong Kong dollars in pandemic relief. If that, since many didn't even qualify under the government's strict guidelines for the handout. Gyms find themselves pleading with the government to let them reopen, some of them still waiting on an initial round of relief funding that was originally promised in July 2020. Most are now buried in paperwork trying to get the second round of relief, 50,000 Hong Kong dollars, which is half of the first offering. For most, this doesn't even cover a month's rent in a city where landlords can be cheap and unforgiving. Fitness instructors have tried to adapt holding workouts outdoors, risking fines and even jail time for simply trying to earn a living and help people stay fit. All the while the government has put up posters around the city telling residents to keep moving and stay active as a way of fighting the virus. Please tell me how this makes any sense. Hong Kong's sweeping restrictions have forced some into dangerous situations. Last summer, when beaches were closed, swimmers ventured outside safety nets into open water where boats are. Hong Kong's hiking trails, now packed with people, saw more rescues reported on the city's many mountains. Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam admitted in an interview with the South China Morning Post that she is so busy she barely has time to talk to her husband, let alone get on a treadmill or do some hot yoga. I don't know anyone who wants to live like this, and it's clear she is out of touch with the very citizens she is meant to represent and look out for. Work-life balance is crucial to one's sanity and if you have too much of one and not the other, you can become stressed out, sad, depressed and make poor decisions as a result. Hong Kongers are crying out for relief from these draconian measures. The government needs to take into account the mental health of people cooped up in tiny flats. Their spirits are being crushed and it makes them less likely to want to continue to fight as a community against this deadly disease. They need their government to throw them a lifeline, a sign that they are being heard, listened to, and cared for. But this would be asking Lam and her cabinet for empathy and compassion, something they have offered little of despite public cries for leniency, help, and understanding. Stay home with your kids, work long hours, don't socialize and try to keep your job amid a dive bombing economy. I don't know what planet this would be feasible on, but it certainly isn't Earth and humans just aren't built for this. Hong Kongers have made immeasurable sacrifices in fighting COVID-19 and their livelihoods have suffered immensely. Some will never recover from the financial holes they found themselves in and the dreams of countless small business owners have been shattered. Dreams that could have been saved by timely and sufficient government relief. Those who argue that sport and recreation are not vital parts of life are living in a dream world. 
No one who is out of shape is happy and mental fitness is impossible if you don't take care of your body. The government has dropped the ball on this pandemic in so many ways and we are all paying for it dearly. Restrictions denying us the right to play the sports that make us happy in the first place.